this session we'll be discussing how the rapid growth in the halal pharma and cosmetic sectors uh, has raised the need for regulation and standardization to maintain uh, halal integrity in production. To uh, begin this session, I'd like to um, introduce our guest uh, speaker, the Director General of the Emirates Standardization and Maturity Authority, um, His Excellency Abdullah Abdul Qadir Al Maini. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the world of Muslim population expected to raise from an estimated 1.8 billion uh, in 2014 to 2.2 .2 billion by 2030, a growth of 26%, which is a high growth. The fast growing population present the core market of halal uh, food and uh, other significant Islamic economy and economic centers. According to the OIC report, uh, the global halal sector worth 2.3 trillion US dollar, uh, worth uh, 2.3 trillion US dollar in 2013, and out of it, uh, we have 67 percent of it is uh, for the food and beverage uh, sector, uh, which worth 1.4 trillion US dollar. In addition to the uh, to that, pharmaceutical products sector is about 22 percent of uh, that market share, and we have. Uh, the cosmetics uh, percentage is around 11%, which worth around 2.230 billion US dollar. However, halal industry expected to be one of the steady uh, growing sector across the globe, uh, uh, across the global uh, economy. And the reason behind that, that uh, halal as a term and halal as a requirement is no longer associated with Muslims. It is becoming a global term and it is becoming a requirement for uh, international businesses and consumers around the world. And this is our challenge as a Muslims. This big growth and increasingly global trust on halal products create a big challenge on Muslims countries to, to lead the development on uh, halal uh, industry and to lead uh, to have an innovative tools with transparent and clearly defined criteria to support uh, to support and to be associated with this growth and high demand of the halal product. Halal industry need to, to be regulated and uh, this regulation and uh, set of requirements and tools need to be developed in association and cooperation with uh, the industry, the manufacturers, uh, the, the country's governments, trades and consumers, and R&D uh, sectors. And this can be done only uh, through standardization. Ladies and gentlemen, standardization played a vital role uh, in developing and boosting trades and business around the world. Standardization can help to maximize compatibility, safety, and reliability of products. It can also facilitate the trade and remove technical barriers. And to keep this growth in halal sector, we need to link our sector to standardization. United Arab Emirates recognized very early the high potential of this industry in the global marketplace. The government through Emirates Authority for Standardization and Metrology uh, in UAE introduced policy initiatives, programs and activities and encouraged uh, private sector to be part of developing the halal uh, sector. We in ISMA developed the first kind of its certification scheme for halal product, which we hope that this will be a benchmark by other countries and members of OIC uh, to lead to have a unique uh, scheme within all the OIC countries and international uh, marketplace. This scheme is based on international set of standards. Main, of, uh, main standards is ISO. Since the ISO standards are globally agreed and it is recognized by WTO, so most of our process standards are based on ISO standards. And CIMIC, which is the entity uh, under the OIC, uh, Islamic Metrology Institute, and GSO, which is the Gulf Standard Organization. And the, the scheme of UAE clearly uh, separates the tasks and roles in value chain of certification 
between different parties within the chain. For example, the, the scheme is defining the role of accreditation. This is the first time that we are introducing accreditation bodies to be involved with, from, uh, within halal sector. So accreditation bodies will have a separate role and clear role uh, to do uh, accreditation for certification bodies. But those accreditation bodies will not be recognized unless they have uh, they implement uh, uh, standards related to accreditation bodies. And they should be qualified uh, to do halal uh, accreditation services. Secondly, the scheme and the requirements for the global market is that we ha should have a clear set of requirements and transparent requirements for our certification bodies. And those certification bodies uh, should implement uh, certification requirements and standards. And uh, in our scheme and what we are trying to introduce within the OIC countries is that we have international standards for certification bodies to be implemented. And we add to that standards uh, our requirements for halal, Muslims requirement. So this will help that our products which is produced in Muslims countries or which is coming to the Muslim countries from uh, abroad uh, complying with international standard and technical barriers uh, removed. Also, the third requirements we, uh, we have in our scheme and what we are trying to do also with the uh, other countries is to have a, a clear unified standards for different sector. For example, if we are talking about slaughterhouses, uh, we should not have two different standards, more than different, uh, one standard between all uh, OIC or all Muslim countries. We should have one, one standard, and one standard for products, one standard for cosmetics, and we should have one certificate, one process of issuing the certi uh, certificate across uh, the industry. And this will help also increase, to increase our trade uh, between uh, Muslim countries and non-Muslim countries. And of course, there is a role on government bodies that they have to play within their own uh, territory and also with other countries uh, in terms of uh, introducing and encouraging uh, on having one standards among uh, different countries. And consumers should be aware that those, those products which is used uh, and uh, the same standards are safe and they are complying with halal requirements. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not take too long from my speech. Shortly you will have a panel discussion with uh, different experts and I hope uh, this will be a fruitful panel discussion. And we are uh, inviting everybody to share their experience, to have uh, one uh, platform for halal industry among all the country, which help uh, our industry to grow more. And, to, uh, and this halal should be based on innovation and standardization. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. Um, next, I would like to introduce um, the moderator and, and the panel. Um, the moderator is the chairman and president of the board of US-based IFANCA. I'd like to introduce Dr. Mohammed Munir Chowdhury. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. First of all, I want to take this opportunity to thank the organizers of this summit, especially the patronage, sub patronage of Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid for his vision and also putting that vision into action. This is three, session 3A, three innovation, standardization, um, competitiveness in halal industry. It's a very uh, broad and loaded subject. We will try to justify 
the, the discussion points within the next 40 minutes or so. Uh, we would appreciate if uh, audience at any time has a question, participate, and also comments would be welcome from the audience. We might have a better experts in the audience than um, any of the people up here. Okay. First, what I see an in innovation, Halal developed 1400 years ago, but ever since there has been innovation taking place in our lives. Okay. Vaccines are innovation. Okay. Many of the food production systems are innovation. Use of uh, stunning in uh, uh, for the animals before they are slaughtered and innovation. Mechanical slaughter is innovation. The list goes on and on. And how we incor incorporate those innovations into our industrial manufacturing sy systems and also increase the acceptability of those new systems through proper education and awareness of the consumers, the government agencies, Muslims and non-Muslims. Many of the ingredients are innovations. GMO is an innovation. The food has become so complex that an ingredient produced in China might travel around the world and end up in China in the final product to be consumed by a consumer. Okay. With the variations in country regulations and variations in denominations of Muslims and the regions where they live, there are differences and different standards are evolving. So there is a need to control that standardization to come to some type of harmonization and that this would be one of the subject uh, of discussion today. Food is my life. Halal is my life. We live halal. Food is 50% or more than 50% of our life. But the other sectors are also evolving. The, uh, not only pharma and vaccines, cosmetics, personal care products, as well as household products, and attention is also given by several countries to the industrial products which might be used in the production of rest of the halal products. What I would like to do is, before opening the uh, session to the question, we would like to uh, you to be involved altogether. I would invite the uh, speakers to panelists to come up uh, to the stage first. Amina Mohammed, she uh, is well known among the halal certification organizations. Uh, she uh, is involved with the Dubai Accreditation Department, okay? and she has, during her course of leadership, Dubai Accreditation Department has re has received full membership. And under her leadership, this is something to note, under her leadership, the Bay Accreditation Center is on top of the organizations which have gotten accreditation from many other uh, countries and agencies. She has bachelor's degree in chemistry and geology, 
and as advisor to the Dubai government for excellent qualification programs for several years. Amina, please join us. Dr. Tabassam Khan is still a graduate student. He has a doctorate degree, medical doctor degree from Pakistan, an MBA in finance, and PhD in healthcare management. I have not met a person with great credentials in three different um, fields. Currently, he's working on uh, vaccines. He's a consultant to several companies, and he is on the board of many uh, corporations. Dr. Khan, please join us. Next two gentlemen are from the industry. Dr. Ayad Al Khatib. Uh, he's with Nestle. He takes care of the uh, regulatory affairs in uh, in the Middle East. He represents Nestle Corporation. Dr. Al Khatib, please. Mustafa Al Batar, our next panelist. Mustafa has a degree in medicine and diploma uh, in hygiene. He's a he's a veterinarian by training. Currently. He works for Coca-Cola Company. If you have the uh, book from yesterday, uh, his uh, affiliation was written wrong in the book. Please correct it. Change the word Nestle to Coca-Cola. Okay. Next, I would invite Sister Amina to reflect on her career under different departments and titles is probably starting with the municipality uh, lab. And more importantly, I would ask her to reflect upon the theme of this session. Uh, first, let me to introduce uh, you about the uh, DAC and DAC activity. For the people, maybe they don't know about uh, DAC. DAC is uh, Dubai Accreditation Center, which is worldwide uh, recognized. Uh, DAC is the only accreditation body in the Gulf region, which is internationally recognized and uh, signed the Memorandum of Understanding with the International uh, Laboratory Accreditation Corporation, which is known by ILAC. Uh, DAC also, uh, the, the only accreditation body in the Gulf region, also signed the International Accreditation uh, Forum, which is known by IF. Uh, this is, we have the recognition in different field of uh, testing, uh, including the calibration and the medical laboratory. Also, DAC is having the international uh, recognition in the uh, inspection field. Also, we have a recognition in the uh, certification field of the management and uh, environment. Uh, on the halal level, uh, DAC also is the member of the uh, CIMIC uh, Accreditation Committee. Um, <clears throat> and I have the honor to be the vice chair of this uh, uh, accreditation uh, committee since 2012. Uh, and briefly, DAC is uh, providing the accreditation service to all type of conformity assessment uh, bodies. Uh, we reach now to more than 350 uh, conformity, accredited conformity assessment uh, body. Uh, we are providing our service in different country over the world. We reach to now more than uh, 15 country over the, the world. We uh, recently extend our services of accreditation to include the uh, halal business. Uh, this is uh, because of the, um, uh, His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum vision for Dubai to be a capital of Islamic economy, <coughs> we start this uh, halal accreditation. Our halal accreditation is based on the international uh, standard requirements in addition to the Sharia requirements. 
Halal accreditation is one of the uh, important pillar of this uh, initiation to be uh, achieved. Uh, in our halal uh, standard and in our uh, system, uh, in halal, uh, uh, we are thinking uh, um, in halal system is based on the more holistic uh, uh, thinking or uh, of halal, uh, halalan tayyiban. Uh, we are not thinking in narrow way that uh, we need uh, the halal is only as, as known by maybe most of the people that halal it is only slaughtering of animal. It's not in our accreditation system, it's not only slaughtering of animal. Halal is uh, covering the full uh, system and the full uh, chain of uh, supply starting from the farm reaching to the uh, table. And based it is on the international standard requirements and harmonize with the Sharia and uh, Sharia requirements. In very simple uh, equation, we can say that our halal system, it is halalan tayyiban, which is equal to quality, safety, and uh, Sharia requirements. Ya ayyuha nas kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiban. This is what we want, halal and tayyiban, not only halal. We are not talking only halal, halal and tayyiban, which is include the quality, safety, and the sharia uh, requirements. May I request uh, Dr. Khan to, to do the same thing, reflect on the theme, and if I missed anything in your introduction, please add that also. Yeah. Now I will just uh, continue from where she stopped and I would start with the quality, safety, well-being, healthcare and Sharia. So <clears throat> the standards of quality are already existing. The standards, His Excellency Al Maini was talking about ISO. ISO today has something like 19,500 standards. So we as the Muslim world have to move towards at least creating 10 standards on which we agree upon. So, it has to be built, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. When we talk of tayyaba, so tayyaba is quality, so the quality parameters are already very well defined. We have to add sharia on top of it and complete the list of what will entail and integrate it into a halal logo on a product. Secondly, we move forward from there. We talk about quality and well-being. What could be certified as halal? We have to classify that also. We can classify it into three groups. The groups which must be certified as halal, for example, food. I'm just giving an example. What could be certified as halal? We can get into biologics, vaccines, pharma, healthcare. And what should not be classified as a halal? If I tomorrow start developing a standard for a halal tie, we are wasting our time. And we make a mockery of ourselves. So that's very important to classify the segments, what must be certified as halal, what could be certified as halal. In the good part, we need to put a lot of effort a lot of innovation into the research and development coming from the Muslim world. And that's where we lack. If you look at the modern day expenditure on R&D in development, you will see that the Muslim world does not even represent 5 to 10% out of the total research. So if we are going to develop the market, we are going to expand the Islamic economy because all these segments are integral part of the Islamic economy. We have to invest in research which we at times ignore. And as I said earlier, we should not be wasting time on things which should not be classified as halal. So one brief message is that today we have moved ahead and in this summit you have heard a lot about the Islamic economy, how is it developing, but mostly we are talking about the global products for the Islamic world as a part of the economy. And I sincerely hope that next year or the years after, we are all sitting in the room and talking about Islamic products for the global world. And that paradigm shift requires a very detailed thought process. Thank you. Next we have Dr. Al-Khatib. He represents Nestle 
the largest, not one of the largest, largest consumer products company. Okay. And I personally know there are at least 80 production facilities which are producing halal products throughout the world. I would ask Dr. Al Khatib to reflect on the theme and also give us a little bit flavor of your company, how you are evolving or integrating halal into the production <coughs> systems to meet the standards of different countries. This is very uh, important for us to know and for the other companies to know how they can do the same if it's not a proprietary information. Okay, before uh, I come to your point, I want to start from the beginning. When uh, God created Adam in, at the beginning of the universe, he told him that to, to eat from everywhere except certain, let's say, tree or certain product. So Adam, like all human, he left everything and go to this tree. This is the same story now. Most of what we have is halal. All food is halal except few few small things. What we are talking about, we are talking about halal assurance system. We want to know that what we eat is halal. We want to, to make sure that the processes, the human, uh, let's say, practices are according to halal. But uh, let's, let's say not uh, minimize the, the scope of halal. Halal is not what is only certified. Halal is everything which is really halal. If we come to, to Nestle, in Nestle we use uh, all our products in Muslim countries are halal. So whenever there were uh, innovation, a new novel food, uh, <coughs> something new, they sent to us in Muslim country to, to let's validate this product, validate the process, ingredient, additives, enzyme, etc. make sure it is halal. This uh, was in the beginning. Now we move to, let's say, next level. Next level, uh, and it's built on what I mentioned before. Next level that we provide these innovators with the halal requirement, which called compliance by design. So whenever the, the innovator want to design something in a research center in uh, Switzerland, in US, wherever, they know the requirement of halal, and when they want to build their innovation, they build it on halal <coughs> basis. Since we implement <coughs> these principles for, for in many cases, they, they didn't, let's say, as innovation, they don't face any, let's say, restriction because it's only a few simple things. I don't think it will be, let's say, restricting the halal uh, concept. So we can, from the beginning, when we want to, to innovate, we can innovate within Sharia, let's say, boundaries, and we can innovate in halal products. I want, to, uh, <coughs> I want to share a personal experience about Nestle. That's how they operate. I visited Nestle uh, R&D Center a number of years ago, and Malaysia <coughs> at that time had requested Nestle to use uh, special clay to clean up their syst uh, production systems if a porcine ingredient has been used in the system. Otherwise, they cannot produce the pr halal product in that. So Nestle, after due diligence, used clay to clean the baby food uh, production equipment, which is miles and miles of stainless steel pipes. So clay really clogged up some of the uh, valves and, and, and filters. So Nestle had to break down the entire plant and move the production somewhere else. Okay? The reason I'm <clears throat> narrating this, this incidence is, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the reason I'm relating this incidence is in the industry what is willing to do go extra mile to satisfy the consumers the government agencies and the customers we have to be very careful in setting up the standards and harmonization and 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 our own practices 
so we do not lose or forget the reasonableness of the standards or, or the concept behind it. And if we work with the industry, we could move faster in making halal products for the entire universe, as Dr. Khan mentioned, uh, faster. Uh, next, I would uh, request um, Mustafa Bater to reflect on the theme, and also uh, I was very short in introducing. Okay, if you want to reflect on your personal role, and if you could share how Coca-Cola operates compared to other companies, one key difference between Nestle and Coke is <laughs> Nestle, whenever the product is a certified halal, the halal logo goes on the label. Coca-Cola takes a different approach, which is make the product halal, don't say about it. Say it only when somebody has a question. <clears throat> this is what I have <clears throat> learned uh, by working with both of the organizations. Sure. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the question. Really, first of all, I don't want to start before thanking all the audience for investing the time and being here and to thank the organizer for inviting us, represented by Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Dubai Islamic Center for Development and uh, Thomson Reuters. King and Coca-Cola, responsible for regulation, uh, regulatory affairs and scientific affairs, my main role really is to ensure and help the company and guide the company with all the aspects of the legislation, including the halal one. Now, uh, being responsible about the legislation and halal, I see today it's really a lot of synergy, a lot of opportunities to address and talk about the opportunities we have in UAE and this global event where we have uh, opportunity to harmonize the legislation and also tap on the uh, critical issues that really can uh, be like a trade barrier for the industries. Now, uh, regarding your question about the Coca-Cola approach, I would like to remind you, being working with the government before, I was working with Ms. Amina, with the Food Control Department, previously with Dubai Municipality, and uh, with Nestle, and now with Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is a totally different business than Nestle. We are beverage. Coca-Cola is not like a food uh, company. Nestle is a food company. I will not do the comparison, but uh, Nestle, they do have meat derivatives product in their soups, in their Maggi product, and that's why they use their logo. But for us, our category is really identified and recognized by all the authority in all the region worldwide in Muslim countries and non-Muslim countries. It's categorized as a non-alcoholic beverage. So we don't use alcohol. Our ingredient, our main ingredient is water. We don't have really, uh, <coughs> you, you, we cannot really compare it with the food business. That's why our consumer, we look at the consumer demand and the government demand. If you compare the consumers in the United Arab Emirates, for example, or the Gulf and Arab world, they will not ask, I uh, will find it maybe really surprising for them to see halal logo on water or halal logo on uh, juices. But maybe this is a trend in some small countries or not small, let's say other countries who are, they, they, they do have different infrastructure, different demography and maybe constitution. Here in MENA, the majority of the Arab League, they do have uh, Islamic constitution, which is by default, requires all the manufacturer to produce their product as per the Islamic Sharia. But if you benchmark with other Islamic countries, it's not the case, because the producer not necessarily are Muslim, and even the constitution not demand to do the quality audit as per the Islamic Sharia. So here we are lucky in the, this part of the world that the government itself they are taking the full control of halal compliance by the, doing the halal audit in each plant in the Gulf or beyond. So I hope I uh, answered the question. Thank, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much <clears throat> for sharing that information. I think we need to get into some of the <clears throat> nitty gritty of the subject and one of the things which keeps coming up again and again is standardization. <clears throat> Would there be one standard? Would there be a global standard? 
I think there can be a global standard, but I'd like to hear from each one of you that how can we take the <clears throat> existing standard in each country and harmonize them enough so we could produce products under one umbrella. Sister Amina. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> as you said that already there is uh, one standard which is a general standard. Uh, I think maybe everybody they know which is the CIMIC standard. CIMIC standard uh, there is for the accreditation body and there is CIMIC standard also for the certification body. And uh, but we, the, the problem that we don't have uh, till now the standard uh, for the food, unified standard for the food. But uh, there is a technical committee which is uh, belong to CIMIC also, and it is chaired by uh, United Arab Emirates. And there is a member of uh, most of the OIC country in this technical committee. They are studying and they are putting the, the establishing the, uh, the specification for the halal food. I think through this uh, committee, maybe we can have a unify uh, uh, halal food uh, standard. And other thing, and through our uh, membership in uh, CIMIC accreditation committee, we are working also to, uh, to establish uh, international recognition system for the uh, accreditation that uh, if any of the member accreditation body in the committee will accredit any certification body, that accreditation, it will be acceptab acceptable by, by all the members. And uh, we are trying uh, to take care of all OIC country and the requirement also of uh, uh, non-OIC uh, country. Uh, the other thing also that maybe we are facing or it is a challenge in the... Uh, halal accreditation, uh, the test method. Still, we don't have um, a unified uh, test method. And uh, there is a few test method, maybe uh, most of you, maybe they know about the detection of pork. We have measurement uh, uh, of, of the kohol and some beverage or some uh, material. Uh, but the problem that uh, still we don't have the detection uh, method for uh, detection limit for the method. Uh, although there is a method, I know that maybe some of you that they will say there is, we, we are as a lab, we are testing alcohol, but the problem that not all the lab who are there testing alcohol, we can say that this uh, method is suitable for halal. We need to define the uh, detection limit for each method. And uh, we are working in DAC, inshallah, in the uh, beginning of uh, November, we will establish a new task force and uh, we will invite all the interest party, they can participate with us, and we, we will start establishing the detection method for each method which is uh, suitable for uh, halal. And uh, also uh, in DAC, uh, we start the first proficiency testing program uh, in the halal, and that it was for the determination of uh, alcohol content in the beverage, and it will be followed by the next program uh, by next month uh, for the kohol also, and uh, it will be in the uh, chocolate. Uh, with regard to the international recognition and through our membership uh, in Hala in CIMIC accreditation committee, we finalize all the document to start the international recognition and to, to start a unified uh, uh, accreditation system and certification system. And uh, in last year, also, we arranged uh, the first peer evaluation uh, training program. It was attended by 18 uh, peer evaluator from the OIC country. And this is the start or the beginning of international uh, recognition. Let, let me ask you uh, <coughs> a related question. <coughs> Actually, that <coughs> two questions. Is there, is there a role? For the, <clears throat> for the testing labs in halal compliance. Okay? I know you come from the lab background. Okay? Mm -hmm. Second is for the, how can we incorporate technology into halal compliance? For example, uh, installing closed circuit TVs uh, on the slaughterhouses. 
rather than somebody staying there, can, can something like that be incorporated? Uh, is that part of the uh, scheme uh, you're developing? Uh, with the halal law of uh, test method, uh, as I mentioned, still there is uh, no law, there is no unified law for the halal. We are working uh, with the uh, OIC uh, country to, to, st to start the halal law for the test method. And that's why we want to establish the task force uh, for the, to, 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 to establish the detection limit for the each test method to be considered that that method, it is halal method. But till now, I can tell you there is no uh, standard or no method that we can say that this is halal method. Yeah, already we are doing some of the method like pork detection. And there is different uh, method for, to, to detect the, the pork. But we need to specify it and to certain limit and to put, put the limit to say that this is halal method because the, the same technique and same method it is used to for other tests it's not only for the pork but we need for the pork and for the halal to to specify the de detection uh, for example for alcohol content <coughs> if i am allowed maybe uh, my detection limit i can measure alcohol till one one percent the other lab they can do point 0.1 third lab point zero 0.01 we need to specify which halal method or which standard or detection method that that is suitable for and the other although they are uh, determined detection the they are measuring the halal uh, the alcohol but it is not for halal not suitable for the halal standard and this is what we want to uh, work uh, the other thing um, uh, the other question it was regarding the uh, new technology we are in um, dubai municipality uh, inshallah, we will have a new project for the uh, to use uh, smart uh, technology for the halal and for any um, uh, product that will have the halal uh, logo, UAE halal logo. We will have we will have a smart technology that the consumer and uh, the <coughs> the consumer and the, the the controller people, the inspection people, they can read the mark and they will know that this uh, mark is from which company and they will know the all details about the product the full chain traceability of uh, this uh, uh, product and this inshallah it will be something very advanced which in very uh, near near future will be implemented by uh, dubai municipality so technology will play a great role in the yes. future of halal compliance <coughs> Dr. Khan, for <clears throat> within pharma and vaccines, is there a, in the short run one global standard? No. <laughs> it's as simple as that because only very few countries have standards for pharma halal certification, but uh, the chemical entities really uh, are an easier prospect, but when you go into biologics like vaccines, that's where, but now we are trying to work it out because it's very difficult because the, the centers of excellence do not exist in the Muslim countries. So the first task is to collaborate with people who understand the concept. I would add one thing here. We have to rationalize everything. There is logic in Islam. Islam is a very logical religion. And there's a scientific basis of everything behind it. The only thing is, when we ritualize it to an extent that we don't talk logic or we are barred from talking logic, that's where the problem starts. Now, what we started to make it acceptable is, okay, we did a survey with the, in the market for the perception of halal vaccines. You'll be surprised. General public has one perception. Medical community has another perception and religious bodies have a totally different perception. So when these three perceptions are not the same, it's very difficult to standardize it. So we started making it acceptable because if the religious body tells us that for a halal vaccine, you need to have a standalone facility, it is not commercially viable. You'll be spending something like 500 million on development of a vaccine, then another 200 million for setting up a facility, and just to do 
for a limited market because it's bought by the donors at a very low price. It is not commercially viable. So no matter how big we talk, it's very difficult to attract the investors to put the money in. So we started analyzing the existing vaccines and you'll be surprised that about 25% of them already qualify to be halal because there is no animal source in them. <coughs> Alcohol is anyway not a major issue there. There is no animal source. So in order to make it acceptable there, I was speaking at a forum in the UK, and we said, okay, we can label them as animal source-free vaccines as the initial step and see what is the benefit of it over the vaccines derivated from an animal source. And the, so that is acceptable to the West also because there's a big you know, shift towards that angle. So once we are able to establish that idea, then we apply the halal standards onto it in the process. But they are already in vials. They cannot mix with each other. They are sealed things. So if you want one factory for every vaccine, it will never happen. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, yeah. Nestle's yeah. perspective yeah. on handling different standards, different yeah. countries. Uh, actually, if, you, if we want to discuss the regulation related to halal food, uh, and I'm talking here from the perspective as halal auditor, uh, halal regulation is more or less the same. It's, it's the differences is, is very, let's say, few, and some kind, sometimes it is intangible. There is some kind of, uh, let's say, uh, ignorance or not knowing what uh, is these standards. There is a st different standards, but more or less it's the same. And we went recently through the certifying our factory here in, in Dubai from ESMA, and actually, when, when we went through this process, we found that it is much easier than what we read <coughs> and what we think about. There is some kind of, let's say, phobia from halal. There is phobia from anything related to Islam in general. So for halal, we want halal to be, to be clarified, simplified, and make it easy to all. Because now, if we, if we want to talk about uh, halal, halal standard, and people uh, believe that there is halal for UAE, Malaysian, uh, every country has different standards, and there is accredited body, different. There need to be some kind of awareness and uh, alignment between the countries to bring one message because the, the aim of this Congress is, let's say, to make it happen, to make people believe on, on, on this message. So we should make it uh, simple, uh, straight to, to the objective, and uh, let's say av avoid this, the complexity in presenting the halal topic. Thank you very much. Mustafa, would like to add something? Actually, I would like to echo what has been said by Iyad from Nestle. Halal is really simple, but the problem can happen sometimes when we have uh, several legislation, being a multinational company, being exist in different places. When we move our product, uh, we prefer always to, since we are talking about one unified standard, will ease our life and our logistic when we have a common standard. So uh, I wish really that halal can be addressed through OIC and uh, Codex Alimentarius as international standard to unify all this legislation. Also to uh, accelerate the accreditation between uh, the Islamic countries to have the mutual acceptance between the halal certification uh, process in UAE or let's say Pakistan or Malaysia or Indonesia. So it will uh, really help the industry to meet that both not only the government but the consumer demands and the trust in uh, our products thank you very much is there a is there a specific question from the audience not a comment only a question yes right here yeah <clears throat> now back there no i saw that hand first it's still up. I acknowledge. I acknowledge. We have only five minutes, so we have to be short. Go ahead. Hi, uh, Peter Galovic, uh, Arabco Projects, uh, Croatia. Uh, uh, my question is referring to Mr. Uh, Mohamed Munir, actually, question uh, regarding this standardization. So basically, me as a consultant, I'm interested 
how halal uh, certified agencies, how they will fit in this new standardization. That's my, uh, <coughs> uh, will they be like consultant? Uh, how do you plan to do this? How they will fit? How can, how, how can we bring the certified agencies into the conformance is the question? Yes. <coughs> I represent one of the certifying agencies. Certifiers are like donkeys. We carry something. And what we carry is certificate based on a certain country's requirement. Okay? And certifiers do not, for most part, have their own standards. They conform to somebody's standard. It's very, very easy to make sure certifiers are doing the job, carrying the weight they are supposed to carry. Okay? Just have to work with the government agencies and the companies. Uh, somebody here had a question, this gentleman here. Thank you. Do we have more than one mic? Do we have more than one mic? No, just one. Man, you have to run. Assalamu alaikum. Mohammed Anas from India. Now we are working for unified uh, standard, or we are working for unified uh, logo, because India, several uh, companies are giving What's certification. The question? the question is unified logo. Uh, globally, we can work for any unified one logo. OK. The, I think the question comes up again and again, would there be one global logo? Inshallah, if we can keep working on all the other things, standardization first. <laughs> harmonization standard first, then accreditation. Every stakeholder, every worker in this halal chain is accredited, they know what to do. Maybe there will be one logo. It's, it's a tall order, but we are hopeful. We'll keep working towards mm -hmm. that. Okay, a question here, yes. No, back, yeah, go ahead. Arif Zaman, I've done some work with the British Standards <coughs> Institute. My question is about the International Standards Organization, and in particular, the opportunities to link in all of your comments with two standards that I think are very relevant for the discussion from the ISO. One is the ISO 31000, which is the risk management standard, and the other is one which is just being decided as we speak, which is the first standard on collaboration, because I think more collaboration is definitely needed, and we have an ISO 11000, which will be adopted within 12 months internationally, the first ever on collaboration. So these are the kinds of links we need to make in I'm, response. I'm Thank with you. you. I'm with you on that. This is totally not today, but it is in the future. This will be worked on, inshallah. I, I, I wish I could take uh, more questions. There's only less than two minutes left. I want to give 30 seconds to each of the panelists if you want to say something, final word. If not, yeah, uh, let, me, uh, let me Oops, sum up this session. Men, there is no empty seat in the room. I'm so delighted to see you calling. Halal is my life, okay? It affects us 24 hours seven days a week. We have our work cut out first for harmonizing the standard, getting into accreditation, working towards proper certification, working towards, inshallah, one global halal standard. Not only for meat, not only for food, also for cosmetics, for pharma, for personal care products, everything else which touches us. Alcohol is not going to be disappearing from this world. It will be there. We have to learn how to manage halal system. Also, God created that animal pig. It's not going to disappear. It goes into so many of the products that you might be sitting on it right now. So let's work together okay, to make the life better and easier for us. Thank you very much.